Sonny Donnelly, IFL TV in association with MTK Global. I'm at the top of the BT Tower today, the uh, BT Sports press conference. Just announced they've uh, signed a new long-term deal, Frank Warren and BT Sports, so for your foreseeable future, your fights will be on BT Sport. Um, Which is a great thing. Yeah, talk to me. Um, you know, I'm glad fighting, um, I ain't fought in about seven months now. So I'm glad that, um, that, I'm, that I'm really, I'm just back in the ring. The platform's a massive platform, you, you know, BT Sports are like really big. Um, they're up and coming, I think they've only been shining boxing for about a year now. Is it a year? Yeah. Yeah, about a year. So it's still new, but it's, a, um, it's an up and coming platform and we're taking over. Um, in Leeds you'll be fighting, obviously on the uh, Warrant and Selby undercard. Mm -hmm. You ain't managed to piss him off in Leeds yet, have you? Not yet. Not yet. Not, not we'll, yet. Wait, we'll wait till fight week before we... Uh... I like Leeds. I think Leeds is a, it's a good city. I've only been there once when Josh Ronson fought someone. Like, it was on a Sky Show a few years oh. ago. But I've been there once and I think it's a really good city. So, um, I love Leeds. They stuck you up on the stage with Jack Cattle. Obviously, uh, he won the British title, vacated it. He's going to focus on the WBO route, which also involves Terry Flanagan. Um, talk to me about that tweet, firstly, you sent out the other day about oh, involving yeah. Terry Flanagan. I've never heard of this guy before. I literally, I never heard of any of these guys until I got assigned to Frank. Well, literally, the only one I got assigned to Frank, and it was like, oh, Frank's got a bunch of other super lightweights that are good. And I was like, really? So, like, when I heard these names, Catra, like, Catra, I've never heard of him. I've never seen a fight. Flanagan, they said that he won a world title at lightweight, is that true? And I've never heard of this guy. And I, have to, I, have to, I just think it's mad that like these guys are supposedly so good, but I've never heard of them. And then apparently he said something about me up, um, up on iPhone. He said that I mentioned his name and that I need to focus on my boxing career. I'm thinking, I've never heard of you. I've never heard of this guy in my life. But you know, he's 33 and up or something, so he must be good. So he must be good, but I've never I've never heard of him, so I was really angry. I was like, your 33 fights, 33 wins, I've never heard of your name, to even mention your name. And you know, you know, I've never heard of him. Well, I mean, you're on the right platform to sort of get them sort of fights. I've never heard of him, but they've heard of me. So that shows you, you that I might, not, I, might not be, I might not be 33 and old, but I'm doing, I'm, 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 doing, I'm doing something right. I'm doing something right. When you talk about all the super lightweights, people don't say, oh, Terry Flanagan is 33 and old. He's a, you know, people don't say anything. People talk about me, even though I've lost a fight. People are still, people are still talking about me. They've got my name in their mouths. Why do you think so many people got pleasure and keep going on about that loss to Josh Taylor? Because people have, have always disliked me and they've been waiting for me to give them a reason for them to slate me over something. So I've loved to fight, I've given them a perfect reason to slate me so they're going to use that, they're going to use that for as long as they can because they dislike me but regardless of how much they say that or they say that I quit blah blah blah, as long as you're talking about me I'm still going to be relevant. As long as you talk at me, yeah, keep on calling me cool. Every time I, I look at my social media and I see how David is a cool, I smile. Do you know why? Because they're still talking at me. They're still making me relevant. Relevant. I wouldn't be. I wouldn't be known. I wouldn't be relevant if it weren't for these guys. So these guys are doing me a massive favour. By them hating me, they're doing me a massive favour. And you know, if they loved me, they wouldn't even say anything. They, you know, I would rather them say I'm a cutter a whole year on, rather than them love me and be like, oh, you know, you, you know, well, you lost a fight and you're going to come back stronger. And then, and then that, and then that's it. Because I look at the people that they love. When they get beat, you know, they say, oh, you know, you know, well, you lost a fight. These things happen in life, and you'll come back stronger. And they never talk about them again. But I would rather be hated and they be talking about that loss. 10 years on, because they keep me relevant. I mean, you brought up a really interesting point in the press conference I just want to touch on, about um, when you got the loss to Josh Taylor, you made you made you realise that you needed to change it, a change of camp, a change of plan, because yeah. you wanted a trainer that could focus on you and not exactly, be in a yeah. camp where yeah. there eight other fighters. So, yeah, Explain so that happened. Point. So I didn't really, you know, so what happened with me getting thrown under the bus, it was a perfect, it was the perfect timing and a perfect reason for me to walk away from that situation I was in. It happened at the right time, so things happen in life for a certain reason. And I feel like I needed that I, that I needed the new team. And you know, with what happened with me getting thrown under the bus, it was a perfect reason for me to walk away. It was the perfect, it was the perfect reason. But you know, I feel like I need that special attention that I wasn't getting anyway. Tony Sims is a great coach. He's a like he's a really good coach. I learned so much there. I learned so much there. But I feel like I need that attention that I weren't getting. So I've seen a few comments on your Instagram, only because you can't get back to everyone. I mean, I know personally, but talk to me about 
your new team, um, the new setup, and, and going forward, what's happening? Carlos Moreno is my new uh, boxing coach. To be honest, me and him, no, he's at me and him fought, um, fought, we fought a few fights in the same shows as an amateur. So he's been a decent amateur, and he was going to turn pro, but he didn't end up going pro. And um, he owns two gyms, and we've been doing our thing on the side anyway. Which I kept, like, I've been keeping it quiet. You know, I've always been doing my thing in this gym on the side, but I kept it quiet. But now that I've walked away from the other team I was with, I could be like, yeah, you know, this is who I'm with now. But we've always been, we've always like been doing our thing on the side anyway. So it's not anything new. You know, it's nothing new. We've been, I've been doing my thing with him for about a year now. Um, a big fight. Your former promoter Eddie Hearn um, matching promotions on the weekend. Hay versus Bell U2, an anticipated rematch. Um, it's not the same because I'm not on the show. <laughs> it's not the same because I'm not on the, I'm on the show. Regardless of uh, who's on the show, I mean, what do you make of the fight itself the second time around? I hope David Hay sparks the fuck out of him. That, to the point, I like it. And I hope old... David Hay sparks the fuck out of him. I, listen, I'm going to put a thousand pound down on Hay to win. A thousand? I'm going to put a thousand pound down on Hay to win. I don't do all that, but probably double your money or something. Mm -hmm. um, on the undercard, a fight that you might be more interested in, your friend and obviously fellow Winnie's Mills uh, eater, Martin J. Ward, fighting Tennyson. Um, how can you see that fight then? Martin Ward's a great fighter, you know. Martin, you know, Martin Ward's a really good fighter, but I feel like Martin Ward's been flown under the radar a bit, you know what I mean? I don't think Martin Ward gets the, the recognition that he should be getting for how good he is. Martin Ward is a world-class fighter, you know, he's I think he drawed one fight and he hasn't lost yet. And Martin Ward's been flown up under the radar. I think it's about time we give guys like him the credit that they should have. But, you know, it, um, you know, a lot of people only give a bit of time to guys like me that talk shit. When someone talks shit, you know what I mean. The boxing fans give him all the time, give him all the exposure. But when people like a Martin Ward who don't talk shit but he can fight, it's time to give people like him a bit of credit, a bit of exposure. So I'm really looking forward to his fight and you know, and he will win because he always wins, that's what he does, but yeah. Okay, so after your fight in a couple of weeks in Leeds, um, I know that you don't want to be just fighting, obviously not nobody, but the <laughs> opponents that you're expected to beat on undercards of other people, I know you're on your top of shows, fighting for titles and getting that money, most importantly as I know you love it, um, what's next after for Leeds? June the 23rd, uh, Sauna's undercard. You know, we're, I'm already talking to Frank and to MTK about um, about possible opponents, so I want to get a title fight for June the 23rd and get right back up there. You know, I'm not wasting no time. Um, in my sparring, I've improved so much, so I just need to implement the same things that I've learned in my sparring and that I've learned in the gym into my fights now. And so on June the 23rd, I want a, I want a title fight. And I want a big, I want a big fight on the 20, on the 23rd of June. I'm not going back to fighting these bums again. You know, they're giving me this bum for May the 19th. But after that, no more bums. I didn't even want to fight this bum, but no more bums. So look, let's get you back out there, a little bit of ring rust off. That's it. But you'll be back. Um, hopefully June, you get a bigger opponent for a title. I'm sure Frank's the man will sort it. Frank's the man will sort it. But until then, O'Hara, good luck in your new training camp. Thank you very uh, good much. luck in your new trainer. I'll catch up with you after Leeds. But until then, thank you for talking to IFL TV. Thank you. Thank you.